know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, when we start thinking about these things, the amazing part about it all is that, you know, we've got a senior citizen aircraft, um, but, you know, the reason why it operates so well is because of the airmen here, right? Um, we've got the best aviators, the best maintenance, best logisticians, best support personnel, um, but it's all symbolized by the square D there and the square D all over the base. And of course, the square D on the tails of our aircraft. So it's, um, it's just a different kind of feeling. And plus with the nose art, it really is um, important uh, about you know, what we stand for and our legacy. So yeah, we're really appreciative of, of this opportunity. I'm gonna miss flying the 135 um, and I'm gonna miss this base. Yes, sir. Um, so you, you spoke a little bit about uh, the airmen here uh, earlier. Um, what was your favorite part of leading uh, the airmen here at uh, RAF Melbourne Hall? Yeah, honestly speaking, the most important part, the thing that I'll always remember and cherish is the fact that um, every single airman has a story, um, but also they contribute in so many different ways. And uh, what they do is they take ordinary people off the streets, put them in uniform, they land here, and they do extraordinary things. And so, you know, we talk often about the Bloody Hundredth, that greatest generation during World War II. Uh, I would argue quite often that we may have the greatest generation uh, yet. And so what they do each and every day impresses myself, our command teams across the base. And um, it's just a humbling experience to be a part of this, this wing. So. Absolutely, sir. And then uh, there also was like such great leadership here as well. You've worked with uh, uh, Colonel Ty, Colonel Tran, Colonel Oblinger, uh, new uh, Colonel Gardner. Uh, how was working with leadership? Yeah, I, you know, the thing is, is that um, we've got phenomenal leaders across the board. And what makes it so special is, one, we're all, um, you know, kind of have a shared uh, interest. Uh, we all have a mission that really relies on each other. So the mission partnerships here, uh, not only within our wing, but to the other uh, wings and squadrons that are calling RAF Milton Hall their home. Uh, we all integrate so well and I talk about it often during newcomers, it's, there's no way that we could tell the difference between a 100th or a 352 or any other unit on this base other than the patch that they wear on their sleeve. And so uh, it's, it's all part of being Team Milton Hall and the leaders that are part of this organization uh, make it possible to put that team in front of Milton Hall. So really thankful for that. Yeah, absolutely, sir. Um, so you, you touched on it a little bit earlier. Um, you said uh, partners. So RAF Milton Hall, obviously, we're here at Royal Air Force Milton Hall in, in the UK. How, how's it been uh, working with the host nation while you've been here? And yeah, um, what, I, what I do appreciate about working with the host nation um, is that they are equal partners in everything that we do. Um, and so they support us 100% uh, and they have a shared interest because what we try to do for them is be great um, ambassadors for the United States. Um, and they are such great hosts. I often say, you know, they do the best thing that is possible. They make, you know, this home our home away from home. And having community partners and community relationships that we do is an integral part for how we are successful in our daily mission. So really appreciative of everything that they do on this base. Yes, sir. So uh, last day as commander, uh, any advice you'd give to the incoming commander, uh, Colonel Jacobus? Yeah. Um, you know what? I think, honestly, the best thing he can probably do is just sit back and watch and observe and really uh, be blown away by the amazing airmen that are part of this team. Uh, they do it each and every day. It doesn't matter who sits in the wing command position. Uh, they accomplish their daily activities in support of our great mission, uh, and they do it extraordinarily well. So uh, I'm sure he'll be able to put his fingerprints uh, and what he uh, envisions for the wing going forward. And what I know is, is that this wing is going to be absolutely successful in every endeavor. So congratulations, Gene. Awesome, sir. So uh, last question. If you could sum up your time here in one word, what would it be? <laughs> one word. Um, probably, a, probably exceptional. Um, but I'd have to put bloody in front of it. So bloody exceptional. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, sir. Well, thank you so much for uh, having this interview today and uh, looking forward to the change of command later. Okay, thanks. And then one last thing. Yes, sir, um, probably ahead. put in the part about, um, you know, uh, Colonel Herring asked me a little bit earlier, what am I gonna miss about this opportunity that I had here? 
And, you know, the one thing I, I would say is, and I told him is, everything. I'm going to miss everything. So it's, um, it's been a humbling experience to have just a great mission, great community, um, great country uh, to work in. And um, we've got and have had tremendous support throughout the way. Um, you know, even with the uh, daunting nature of the global pandemic, uh, our airmen still found ways to make sure that we were able to execute the mission uh, and do so extraordinarily well. Um, and oftentimes surpassing what we had ever done in, in, the, in the past. So when you think about the, that in context, um, they really rose to the occasion. So historic, historic um, challenges, uh, and yet they overcame all of them and turned them into tremendous opportunities. So really proud of this team. So thanks.